Thank you very much, Richard. Thanks. Um, thanks very much, Oscar. Before I start, <clears throat> I mean, this is the guy that's been moderating you all day and yesterday. Look just over his shoulder. Can you explain that, please, Oscar? Uh, yeah, this is a presentation I, I, I take round with me. Um, so the reason why I ask questions like, who's a mobile developer? I often ask, who's making a freemium or a premium game? So is anyone making a paid game in this room? Anyone? Paid game? Those guys with the hands up making paid games, you are the living dead, you are zombies. And the reason why I've got this photo exists yeah. is because I got my friends and family to dress up as zombies so I could make a presentation to illustrate why you guys are all dead, but you just don't know it yet. Sorry, Very enough good. of that. So um, for those of you who've seen me speak before, um, I do have a, a, a ton of data. Uh, if you need the presentation in PDF format, um, richard at flurry.com. It's probably the easiest and most direct way to, to get hold of the presentation. So relax about taking, uh, taking pictures of the screens and stuff. Just ask me and I'll send you the presentation. So for those of you who don't know uh, Flurry, uh, we're an analytics and advertising company. Uh, we now track a bewildering number of applications. It's just over 290,000 applications for about 90,000 companies. So when we produce these slides, it's not extrapolated estimates based on a small panel size, AKA Comscore or Nielsen. This is actual data. We think we track almost every active smart device in the world today. How we do that is that almost every device has at least one app that has our software in it. Because we track for Angry Birds, we track for Fruit Ninja, we track for Tumblr, Skype, Shazam, the New York Times, the Financial Times, and the list goes on. So once you buy your smart new device, you typically will start downloading uh, pretty quickly, and you'll download one of ours. So we have unique insights to the world of applications and mobile. And by the way, we're obsessed by mobile and applications. We don't do the web. We don't track anything in that's browser enabled. Um, although we do have an HTML5 version of our analytics. Um, we give away the data for free. It's the world's most powerful analytics. Uh, we do it for a reason. We're not a charity. We're an advertising business as well. We're a traffic acquisition network in its first iteration. So you can come to us and leverage our data to help us find you lookalikes. So the people that we think that are most likely to like your games, not only download them, but go on to play them. And we do that through typically a, a pricing of cost per install. We also have, for the last two years, launched video a really, really cool way of promoting your games through a 15 or 30 second commercial, which will run inside other apps. Um, you pay on a cost per completed video view. We also launched a channel tracker, Ad Analytics, which helps you as a marketer if you do do traffic acquisition. It helps you measure the relative value by the source of traffic against a key metric. So in Flurry, you can then go super deep on all the other an analytics. So if you're buying from us or Millennial or in Mobi or any of the ad networks. But what you really want to do is know how many people get to level four or how many people make at least one in-app purchase. You can do that with our technologies and there are others out there which is trying to make marketing more of a science than an art. We want to really get you guys thinking about using data and using data effectively. We also launched AppSpot. It's a brand new uh, ad management system. It will serve ads for you. It will mediate the networks. But typically, as you'd expect with Flurry, the key difference is our data. So, uh, I said we track a bewildering number of events and data. Event is any completed action that you want to track on uh, inside your, your, your game. So that could be reaching a level, could be making that purchase, could be sharing on Facebook, could be going to the leaderboard, could be going to the storefront. And we tracked last month just over 1.2 trillion of those. So we track about six times more data than that company that's got lots of data called Twitter. We have about 4,000 servers and it's an extremely big and expensive business for us. Um, so without further ado, I just want to sort of, I'll flow through some of these. You obviously are aware there are a lot of applications in the marketplace for consumers to choose today. We think actually it's shifted to about 800,000 unique pieces of content in both the two main stores, Apple and, and Google and uh, Google Play. Um, it's a significant challenge and I've just listened to a great presentation by Kyrosene, the, the publisher, Brett, about how you, how you think about getting your game noticed, how you think about that key buzzword, which is discovery. Do you, do you use a partner? But what's absolutely clear is that there's a really big challenge in, in getting your great game noticed and in people's handsets. And it's a really big challenge. And I think the world of discovery is going to obsess us for many years to come. 
But there's kind of some really good news out there. We, as I said, we think there's about 850 active, 850 million active smart devices in the world today. Uh, we think by the end of this year, it will rise to about 1.1, 1.2 billion. Um, but we think there's about 2 billion in the target addressable market. So we think even by the end of this year, we'll only be about halfway through the penetration and the migration from feature phones to smartphones is continuing at pace. But there's some really good news there. People often ask me, you know, I'm new to the world of, of mobile game development. Am I too late? You know, I've been, I've been working on Facebook or, or desktop for, or consoles for so long. Um, am I too late in mobile? And, and I think, yes, the market's matured. Yes, the number of choices that consumers have got is bewildering, um, but it's, we really are just starting out. Even by the end of this year, we'll only be 50% through, through that penetration. It's a, it's a fantastic opportunity for everyone. That two billion, by the way, is uh, worldwide adults that are middle class or higher that can afford a smartphone. So um, just so that you know. I mean, the same problems as I think Daria did. Um, but it's a different laptop, it's weird. Um, so this is uh, active penetration of uh, smart devices by market. Um, and uh, I've also got uh, the, the growth. So if we look at these two slides, principally I'm showing you these to help you work out which markets you should be focusing on and which has got the major growth ahead of it and where maybe can you establish a real reputation but in some of the markets that are less obvious. People obsess about you know, the US and, and China, of course, they are the two biggest markets. And I'll come through on, on the growth of international by sessions. It's fascinating how international is really taking over from the US. Um, but you can actually see in terms of compound annual growth, there's some fantastically fast growing markets out there that, that can help you shape, well, what games am I gonna build? What genre, in what markets? Because I can really see from Flurry data, there's some really big, big numbers. There's some really big numbers coming for new customers that are brand new to this business of, of having a smart device and playing games in native applications. And I've also got a really good loyalty matrix. Thanks, Oscar, for bigging up our blog. blog. If you go to blog.flurry.com, we produce about one a week. Um, and I've got a really good loyalty matrix, which looks at um, how long and how often people play by, by genre. So look out for that at the end. So again, it helps you do, do really effective planning for your business. So this is um, looking at the US market, so the largest by rank uh, in terms of users, and, and this is, looks at the iOS, iOS market. Um, so you can see that October 2011, of all app sessions that we track, reminder, we track over 290,000 applications, we saw about half of the app sessions in the US market, 27% in the next uh, uh, eight uh, ranks, eight countries, so two to nine, and then 25%. Look what's happened, look what's shifted a, in a year. So now 71% of the app sessions that we see are outside the US. So we can really see, and we think that will just continue at pace. So actually the predictable trend is that the US gets, as a percent of app sessions, smaller and smaller and smaller as this market matures. So hopefully, again, that helps you, helps you think, well, which market should I be in? Which ones should I really try and focus on? And some crazy things happen once we get a smartphone or a, or a tablet uh, or a phablet, as I heard the other day. Ridiculous. Look at the green. That's what happens with our time that we spend every day inside applications on our smart device. Look how much it's grown in two years. So December 2010, we're spending just over an hour inside applications, inside native applications. Flow that through to December last year, we're actually now spending over two hours a day inside applications. And that's directly impacting the content that we access via a browser. That's either the desktop browser or it's the mobile web. And again, I get asked, you know, should I be developing for the mobile web? Should I be developing for, for, for native applications? There's your answer. Over two hours a day is an incredible number, and we can see that growing and growing. It's starting to, we're starting to spend as much time in applications as we do our dearly beloved television that sits benevolently on the wall and pumps out absolute rubbish content. They talk about first and second screen. It's no debate for Flurry. The first screen is the most entertaining, and that's the one you've got in your lap. The mobile TV is already here. It's called the tablet. It's a really exciting opportunity. And our dearly beloved television world, we spend about four hours of wasted time on reality TV programs, can't stand any of them. But I love my games and I love spending my, playing games in the evening. I'm not, not untypical there. We graphed 
time of day for tablets and TV, and it looks exactly the same. The peak is around 6.30 to about 10.30 in the evening. It's fantastic. So then I'm obviously going to look at uh, percent of sessions by category, uh, both smartphones and tablets. And you can really see that, you know, 70% of time spent inside applications is two categories, games and social networking. Social networking is not just Facebook. In fact, we measure more traffic outside Facebook than inside Facebook. We don't track Facebook specifically, but we estimate the time that people spend on Facebook per day, and then we can see everyone else. But in the social network charity, that's dating, that's instant messaging, that's VoIP, that's all other communication tools. But you can see it dramatically shifts in tablets. And as I said, you know, we're spending most of our time on tablets, on Wi-Fi, at home, in the evening, playing games. Bit of a no-brainer, but it's fascinating that actually on tablets, we're spending just shy of 70% of our time inside games. So again, if you're thinking about what devices am I planning for, what platforms am I planning for, what markets should I plan for, hopefully this data is super, super, uh, super useful for your planning purposes. And actually, you can see utilities significantly drops, you'd expect that. We, know we don't use the tablet for weather, for train times, for all those utility devices and utility apps that, that we're snacking. The session times on smart, smartphones is much, much shorter than it is on, on, on tablets. And the market's really, really big. Uh, we estimate that in 2012, the total market of the sale of virtual goods inside mobile applications and Advertising was worth about 18 billion. Actually, I'll admit, Flurry got the estimates completely wrong back in September. Q4 was just a stunning quarter. Anyone see our Christmas data, but we saw a huge number of activations on Christmas Day. About 18 million new devices went to market on Christmas Day. About 50 million in Christmas week. We saw about 1.75 billion downloads worldwide on Christmas week. So again, I was, I was uh, lucky to be interviewed by BBC Worldwide last Christmas, and uh, George Alagaya asked me, so what's at stake here? Why are all these developers pulling all-nighters? And I said, because every Christmas just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. But it's one of the most competitive market times in the market as well. Um, so actually, advertising, it's obviously a business we're in. It drives all of our revenue. Um, it's a big, big market. You know, we estimated that in-app advertising was worth about six billion last year. It's a phenomenally big market. If you're in the free-to-play mobile business, which I can only assume most of you have kind of grappled with that freemium versus premium and kind of the debate's not really around kicking anymore, it's kind of free-to-play. But if you're in the free-to-play business, you really need to think seriously if you're not doing the advertising piece about how you monetize your non-spenders. Because your non-spenders are a very, very large part of the marketplace. They will play, they will grind, they will continue in the core loop, and they will never give you a damn penny. So stick advertising in front of them. It's effective and it will make you money. And it will make you money with lots of partners, including Flurry. Or show them videos. Actually, they love videos. So again, you can see that the market's uh, pretty big, pretty big, pretty interesting. And actually, the art DAO's uh, changing shape as well. You games developers are killing it in terms of how effective you're becoming at making money on an average per day per user. You can see that you know September 2011, that's not that long ago, the vast majority of those top 1,000 grossing games were making less than 25 cents per user per day. But actually, you can see that's changing. So now 32%, a third are making between 25 cents and 75. And actually, the over 75 cents category has gone from 3% to 15. And again, we see that trend continuing. We see that continuing at pace. So again, if you're trying to think, well, I'm going I'm to produce a social turn-based game. I'm going to launch it in Australia, Japan, uh, and Argentina, because Flurry says that's the big markets. Uh, but what am I going to make on an opt-out basis? And if I'm going to start to require users through whatever means, how much can I really start to look at if I produce a, a, a category benchmark type game that performs at least as well as the market? Hopefully this stuff helps. So my last three slides are this loyalty matrix. It's fun stuff. We produced, produced this first one of all categories. So I'm just going to quickly show you this one, and then we could go into the, the game genres. So Cartesian scatter plot graph. For those of you who love data, four quadrants, one, two, three, four. It's uh, 
how, how long, how frequent, uh, and how often. So, uh, other way around. Horizontal is how long, vertical is how often. I knew I shouldn't have had that extra shot last night. Uh, quadrant one, best, best quadrant to be in. You're retaining, you're keeping players long, and they're playing frequently. But in this particular category, obviously, it's news and communication. Ever, everly, uh, always valuable. Um, they, they last news changes all the time. Great opportunities for subscription-based services, great opportunities for advertising. The toughest sector is obviously quadrant four. Um, sorry, quadrant three. So you, uh, you play intensely, but not for very long. And you can see um, social, uh, social games is in quadrant two there. So high, highly intense usage, but the retention rate is not very long. It's a matter of days. Quadrant three here is the kind of one and done. You'll play it once and maybe never again. You'll use the app once and never again. And there are a lot of applications that, that share that pain of only having a one night stand with a user, and it's really difficult to retain them. So let's have a look at uh, the games genres. And it's amazing how games genre really behaves very, very predictably. And you can see that uh, slots, sim, resource management, mm -hmm. and social turn based are in category one. You know, you retain people, they often will probably have your game in those categories on their phone forever. It's their favorite slots, their favorite social turn base. Welcome. Uh, and so, you know, uh, it, re really good opportunities for, for a long-term relationship where, where your users will stay with you. Uh, look at card battle. You know, there's lots of talk about how popular card battle is in the Asian market, and it is. But look at it, you know. Uh, frequency of use per week is about five, five, seven. But your retention rate's dramatically hard. So if you're in the card battle genre, you've got to seize the opportunity to monetize very quickly because your, your relationship with that user is super short. Think about a relationship with a person that's going to last a couple of days. You've got to make it happen, guys. You've got to really find your sweet spot and the timing to monetize within the first few days, or otherwise you probably never will. And you've got a continuous churn of users over time. It's a really, really big challenge for that, for that particular sector. So, and casino, casino and poker behaves very differently in terms of how long and how frequent people use compared to slots. And obviously the endless time wasters. We all have endless time wasters that again, we'll probably keep on our phone forever, but we may not use very often. You know, I, I, um, I discovered Diamond Dash again, and I hadn't played it for about two years, and you know, you're in an airport, and it's like, all right, fair enough, what a lovely time waster this one is. But actually, it's, uh, I'm, I'm against the trend, it's obviously mostly a female demographic. But in that category is obviously, you know, Cut the Rope, and Fruit Ninja, and all of those. So, um, retain, you'll keep it on your phone, you'll keep it on your phone probably forever. <laughs> Useful stuff. So uh, that blog was called The Gamification of Games. Yeah, I know. We were having a laugh. Um, it's on the blog. It was produced in December. If you want to go deeper on that particular uh, set of data, then, then please do so. But my last slide actually looks at it slightly different. It looks at the average age and, uh, and the percent of penetration male to female. Again, hopefully this helps you know who you're designing for. So if you're designing for a casino poker app, you're designing for middle-aged men. Now, maybe that doesn't come as a surprise, but I think it's really interesting to see it very accurately portrayed from Flurry's data. Uh, Slots has a similar profile, but actually the bias is, is, is much more heavily towards women. Actually, I think that's probably more a surprise. You probably think that you know, poker and slots have a very similar demographic. It doesn't. Actually, we're seeing it, it far more em heavily emphasized for women. Solitaire, uh, really, really uh, heavily penetrating women. Um, to put paid to my sex life at home, I have to say, if I don't mind sharing that with you. My girlfriend loves Solitaire, and she plays it for a couple of hours every night solidly. Thank you, man. Hey? Anyway. Um, and uh, then you can sort of see the cluster down here of card battle. Uh, maybe that's that, what I said about card battle being highly, not very highly frequent, but, but actually for a very short period of time. Actually, it's, it's, it's young men. So you can kind of get a sense, yeah, that makes sense too. 
So uh, again, hopefully all of this data, and by the way, this is like slide 15 slides of, of, of about 150 I have to choose from. And almost all of those are produced from the insight reports that we, pr we produce almost once a week. So, so if you want to say, hey, that's really interesting, but what else has Flurry got? Do go to the blog and, uh, and find out more information there. So hopefully that's useful. Hopefully that's useful for planning purposes. Uh, Flurry really believes that data, insight, measurement is critical to every business. People often say it, um, it diminishes the creative juices of a company. I would strongly disagree. I think a company that's got great, great creative um, and innovation and passion at its heart, but also is very data driven. So it's a, it's a combination of an art and a science. I think you're much more likely to be more successful in this market because of that. So uh, with that, I'm done. Thank you. Well, thank you, Richard. That's, that's great. Thank you. And uh, I didn't expect him to take the mickey out of me so early in the, in the presentation. Thank you very much, sir. I, um, I did have, uh, what I have been trying to find is Oscar's house last Christmas was covered from top to bottom with lights. So just another little insight into the man that's hosting your day today. It, it's very sad, but Top true. to bottom with lights. <laughs> yeah, tastefully done, of course. Tastefully done, yeah. yeah. They're, actually, they're not tasteful at all. They're rubbish, but anyway. Um, thank you very much, Richard. So uh, let's, I mean, you've got the guy here who has at his fingertips the data that matters for what's happening in the industry. We've seen some great stuff about what's happening with the second screen and the fact that the second screen is no longer the phone or the tablet. It's actually the TV that's second. The first screen is the thing in our hands, as I think Richard clearly pointed out. So things are changing dramatically fast. What do you want to know from the guy who's got the data? So let's have some questions, guys. What, who, who's got a question? Question right there. I the don't microphone. have all the data in my head, though. I'm not that clever. Oh, you're, uh, pretty, you're pretty strong at it. Don't right? know. Thanks for an interesting presentation. Um, I'm kind of curious about the advertising uh, revenues that games might get because you talked about the for the people who are not paying yes. so you use advertising to get money from them yes so can can you suggest that what kind of percentage comes from advertising you know for for a typical game maybe I don't know if that's a fair or an easy to come up with well, like, we, is, it, mean, is it as low as two percent or is it like five percent so, so we're seeing generally of, of the of the of the share of revenue between virtual goods and advertising it's about a third so if you're, if you're good at both and you're, you're the average, you should be generating about 70% of your revenue from the sale of virtual goods and about 30% from advertising. Um, what you can do on iOS and what you can do on Android is actually quite difficult, uh, different rather. Uh, obviously, Apple takes a curated um, uh, editor's um, management position on, on apps. So for example, they banned incentivized installs uh, a couple of years back. It was probably a good thing. Um, Whereas on Android, you can do that. So in your storefront, if you want to monetize those that typically are looking for free packages, you can offer them currency in exchange for them downloading somebody else's application. That's actually a, a big money spinner. Um, however, I'm probably going to predict the eventual demise of incentivized installs completely because it's not advertising as we know it. And we know that user behavior dramatically changes if you're incentivized to do so. You'll probably eat a burger that you've never eaten if it's for free, or they actually pay you to eat it. Um, whereas where you would normally eat is actually a very different um, behavioral pattern. So we see that in advertising. I think it really works for the publisher because it inc increases loyalty, increases engagement. Um, the users love it because it gives them free currency. I'm not convinced about the advertiser piece, but it does help you do one thing, which is rise up the charts. The one thing you can do if you buy enough traffic is actually influence your chart position. So I think incentivized installs probably has, it's an answer and a means to an end on the discovery thing, but it's a bit of a blunt tool. But I actually had a different experience from that. Uh, when we were doing uh, the papaya work, there was a lot of success where there was a relevance for the way the incentivized download worked with the game. And so you're right, it's a bit of a blunt tool, but if you do it smartly yeah. and you do it integrated with the gaming experience, so you use the same currency for both the game that you're sending someone to and the game you're playing in, what we found is that the revenue generated and the actual engagement of the user was as high whether they came through incentivized right. download or not. And, and, and actually Flurry uses its data to prioritize the order so that the one that we're actually serving to you, even though that, that might be an incentivized ad, is actually the one that we think is the most relevant. So if yeah. you combine those, actually, you are more likely to get engagement beyond the download. I think with all these things, like, like the general 
principle of how we use marketing, we have to be smarter than we have been so far yes. because we're dealing with an ever more disruptive and competitive environment. Yes, and, and uh, in Flurry's tool, you can do segmentation. So you can segment by market. You can also segment by gender and by age. And you can really find out who your, the sweet spot of your customers are. And what we'd really encourage you to do is take that data and say, hey, look, I know if I win middle-aged women, I'm far more likely to, to nail it. So on the acquisition channel, help me find middle-aged women in these four markets because they're my best markets. So middle-aged women in those four markets are my sweet spot. Rather than buying blind and just scattergun, actually be much more intelligent and use that data to find lookalikes. Find your whales, your future whales, by knowing who your current ones are. I suspect if we start looking at the user behavior and life cycle and apply that to that way of thinking, we could go even further. But yeah. enough about me talking. Uh, so more questions. One more question from the audience. We have a question over here. Uh, speaking about regional... Uh, well, I mean, there was a slide about trending regions, new regions, except for the U.S., right? And some of them, I mean, in some of these regions, like the standard mobile app distribution services like uh, Apple App Store and Android Marketplace are not that popular. So question two, could you highlight any regional uh, application distribu distribution marketplaces? Uh, or platform specific or regional specific that not off the top of my head no <laughs> thank you Oscar okay. so well it's hard to produce sensible examples that with with enough data I don't have some hard and fast data to sort of prove some of those things but we have seen um, <coughs> you know, even if you go back to sort of the way Rovio kicked off that by focusing on regionality you can have great success, but you've got to be smart about it and you've got to take time to think about those things. So but, I can't give you any data, we, but... You know. I, I can answer it another way. We certainly see the third fastest growing operating system is Windows. Yeah. Uh, and RIM is, is flatlining and declining in terms of sessions and new activations. So new activations, we can, new projects we can see when, when a developer comes to us and creates a new project with Flurry in it yeah. and, and RIM's flatlining or in decline, whereas Windows is actually growing pretty fast. So if there's a third player it looks likely and we always say don't, un don't underestimate Microsoft they'll 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 invest and invest until they get it right so and we're seeing fast growth there so we probably ought to start expanding this subject in, in further and look at the the way that we generate mobile marketing success so with that in mind I'm going to say thank you to Richard for All his right. time it's a pleasure